Hi guys, this is the village of Dasaki Akna where I live. Uh, this structure here that you see in front was constructed so that people remember that no matter how affluent and well off they, they get and how comfortable they are, that once upon a time, not long ago, they had to live in tents. They had to evacuate the small town of Dasaki, of Akna rather, the true town of Akna, and they had to rebuild a complete new town at Dasaki Akna. Dasaki means small wood. So here we are. So it's a commemoration of the Turkish invasion of 1974 and the hardship that people had to suffer It's actually quite a beautiful structure, a monument to a struggle that continues to until today. Hi guys, I'm using a long lens here very long lens, 600 millimeters, no tripod, in the car, engine running, ready for a quick getaway. Because using a long lens in this area could get you shot, and I don't want that again. This is a Turkish observation post. It's about 50 meters away from the main roads, the main roads in British Crown land. And on the other side of the road is separate territory. So you've got three countries within 50 metres of each other. It's always a bit of a dangerous mix. So I'll take this long lens off and I won't look as though I'm pointing a weapon at them. And uh, I'll take you for a walk along the Green Line. It's colloquially called the Green Line, locally here in Cyprus. But its official name, the buffer zone, is actually the Attila line because the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974 was codenamed Operation Attila. Right guys, I'll take you for a walk now with a, look, a shorter lens. So guys, that's the watchtower in the distance. Main road is here. I live over there, just this side of the football stadium, behind the big tree. There's no image stabilisation on this camera, so I need to walk slowly and deliberately try not to give you the wobbles. This is where we used to walk the dogs. Uh, we don't do it anymore. Tina tried last week and she virtually had to carry Oscar home. Always oh, a bit nervous when I hear slow moving vehicles around here. I'll explain why in a minute. side over there is the north. There's the watchtower again in the distance. Taking a bit of a risk using a long lens. A big risk. Hey ho, I've done it now. 
but the grass is a bit high. Makes things a bit difficult to see. So you'll immediately notice that that side is completely uncultivated. And on the other hand, this side here is totally cultivated. They're making the land work. Now, I don't know why that might be. I've got a suspicion that there's mines in there. I know a safe Actually, I know a couple of safe routes, uh, but where it's overgrown, I, I wouldn't take the chance. This road here, the proper road, is uh, on the northern side. It's uh, for army vehicles to change the guard. You often see them coming and uh, with a bunch of guys in the back. They're generally conscripts from mainland Turkey and they're sent here for 18 months or two years to stand in those watchtowers. Watching me with my camera. Also very good for bug life. The way these roads get close together, we used to get quite a lot of hassle from the Turkish soldiers. They would try and stop us and harass us. Can't see the mountains today. There's too much humidity. The dogs would used to absolutely love running around here when they were younger, when there was three of them. just let them off the lead and they were very good, the, the recall was really good. I think there's a video of that on the channel, a, a short somewhere. There we have a cement factory and there we have, believe it or not, a pet food factory. But our cats won't touch it. That was a big old bird. So we used to go for miles with the animals. We used to walk all the way along that road, right along the fence. When you get to the end of the road, it actually comes to one of these guard towers. The, uh, the uh, buffer zone, the line, the green line, it takes a bit of a dog leg to the south the end of this road about uh, two miles away. You'll see all this stuff on Google Earth if you're interested. There's lots of these uh, watchtowers and on the other side there's also separate watchtowers watching the watchtowers and there's also UN watchtowers watching both of them. That's what that damn helicopter is every day. It flies over our house. It turns at our house. Scares chili pepper half to death. It's a UN helicopter patrolling the buffer zone. Based in Nicosia. 
which is the capital of Cyprus. The Turkish side, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, isn't recognised by anyone apart from Turkey, as far as I'm aware. Perhaps that's changed. I don't think so. The invasion was in 1974, fully sanctioned by the USA. They used American equipment. All sanctioned by good old Henry Kissinger. The Americans knew that there was British troops here, but they didn't know how many. And on a briefing that was sent to Kissinger, the CIA estimated 500. That was a typo, and there was actually 5,000 5, soldiers here, and 10,000 dependents. The dependents were evacuated. The Brits also had a big airfield at RAF Akrotiri where they just happened to have nuclear capable bombers stationed, Vulcans and a squadron of F-4 Phantoms which were more than a match for anything that the Turkish Air Force could throw up at the time. They had F-100s, Voodoos, Archaic, But the Brits were told again by the Americans not to get involved. So they, <coughs> they simply retrenched, they helped to evacuate the local population. They helped to set up the Saki Akna, the tented colony there. As the village of Akna became overrun. Uh, they set up a fort called Fort Bravo, which is about a mile down that road there and that was to protect the uh, fleeing civilians and to secure the border of the eastern sovereign base area of the Decalia garrison. Now the western sovereign base area was protected by the king's, the king's southern borderers I think And I think here, it was the 16th, 25th Lancers, with scimitar armoured cars. No tanks, but the scimitars would have been enough against the Soviet era weaponry that the Turks had. So it was all a bit of a cluster, you know what. It's a very pleasant day today. I can't believe that this crop's uh, dry enough to collect this hay. It sells for a lot of money here, animal feed. Uh, given the rain we had in the last few days, it's incredible that it's dried up already. So the Cypriot people in the government controlled area, and in the real area of Cyprus, the south, are still very bitter about what happened in uh, 1974. Uh, following this they became even more entrenched in being non-aligned, i.e. not joining NATO. Cyprus aren't members of NATO. A lot of people think they are, but they're not. And uh, they became very much in the sphere of the Soviet influence. Their cultures are very similar. A similar alphabet, not the same, but similar. Also, they have a similar religion, Orthodox Christians. So you could see why it would be quite easy to fall under that sphere of influence when your friends had stabbed you in the back.
politicians aren't very clever. They think they are, but they're not. You should bear that in mind. It's only when you get older you, you realise how stupid politicians are. We're blighted by them. They're destroying democracy with their stupidity. Alright guys, rant over. See ya.